。上一集的美国选举，大鸡多屌 ，cause something went down that could completely change the outcome of this year's presidential election, resulting in Trump having an increased chance of winning this thing. That is, as long as he can keep his mouth under control and do well in the debates. If he can manage that, then he's got this thing in the bag. We're gonna win so much. You may even get tired of winning. Because just a few days ago, a former presidential candidate and former member of the Democratic Party, who I was actually going to vote for, recently endorsed Donald Trump. And not only that, he went scorched earth on the Democratic Party. And this man's name, Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy Jr. What can I go on? This guy's bloodline runs rich with sentiments of the anti-status quo. And today, I'm going to introduce you to him, why he jumped ship from the Democrats, and most importantly, why in the hell is he endorsing Donald? Donald J. Trump, and trust me, this is about to be one of the most craziest political stories you have ever heard. So, to bend the palm, Hua, and let's get into the story of a very talented man who suffered the very unfortunate fate that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. <laughs> So, in order to understand RFK, let me give you a basic background on American politics. Everyone knows that the United Kingdom has royalty, Japan has royalty, even Thailand has royalty, but America does not. However, back in the 1950s, we did have something that came very close: the Kennedy family. Starting with JFK, a handsome elite who became the second youngest president in U.S. history at 45 years old, this war hero, along with his wife, brought the first wave of hope and change to a young America. But unfortunately, that all came to an end when he became the first president. In the world to be assassinated live on television in color, no less. That sucks. Then five years after that, his brother Robert F. Kennedy would also be pew pewed live on television, and this resulted in these two becoming huge pillars in the Democratic movement and ultimately becoming idols and royalty in American politics and American pop culture. Needless to say, the name Kennedy carries a lot of weight in America, and this is where I bring in today's protagonist, Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy Jr. Just like his father and his uncle, RFK. Jr. Jr. was a political Democrat, and although he is what some people might consider a bit of a conspiracy theorist, there is one very unique trait that I really like about this guy. He does not casually or personally attack his political opponents. Instead, he attacks their policies and explains where he can do better than they can. Now, when it comes to Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, this idea might be a bit of a foreign concept. No, I, 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 I you're right. I don't care. I don't care. But unfortunately, my man has suffered greatly at the hands of two very significant health problems. RFK Jr.'s presidential campaign is responding to new reporting that he suffered memory loss due to a parasitic worm in his brain. You heard that right. His spokesman told CBS News, "Quote: The issue was resolved more than 10 years ago, and he's in robust physical and mental health." Questioning Mr. Kennedy's health is a hilarious suggestion given his competition. And now he is completely fine. A clean bill of health. But we. We have to admit, it is goddamn weird. Weird, weird. And in addition to brain worms, my man suffered what every politician fears the most: the loss of his voice. Your voice is how you convey emotion. It's how you show your personality to people and potential voters. So RFK Jr. suffers from a condition known as spasmodic dysphonia. And compared to his father and his uncle, this leaves RFK Jr. looking a lot less charismatic. And in today's attention economy, where people can barely focus on one thing for one minute at a time, RFK Jr.'s voice is a A serious political liability. Even if his policies are legit as fuck, modern audiences will find it really difficult to suffer through his voice and actually hear what it is he has to say. I have never been an anti-vax. I have never told the public avoid vaccination, and my views are constantly misrepresented so that the truth of what I believe is not. We're not allowed to have a conversation with about that with the American people, which I believe things should be tested with the same rigor. As other medicines and medications, but despite these unfortunate shortcomings, my man managed to gather quite a bit of political support and get himself on all 50 ballots in the United States. Well, that is until recently. More on that later. So, why in the world would someone who was born into the royalty of the Democratic Party want to leave them? I attended my first Democratic convention at the age of six in 1960, and back then the Democrats were the champions of the Constitution of civil rights. The Democrats stood against authoritarianism, against censorship, against colonialism, imperialism, and unjust wars. We were the party of labor, of the working class. The Democrats were the party of government transparency and the champion of the environment. True to its name, it was the party of democracy. 
as you know, I left that party in October because it had departed so dramatically from the core values that I grew up with. It had become the party of war, censorship, corruption, big pharma, big tech, and big money. When it abandoned democracy by canceling the primary to conceal the cognitive decline of the sitting president, I left the party to run as an independent. Conventional wisdom said that it would be impossible even to get on the ballot as an independent because each state poses an insurmountable tangle of arbitrary rules for collecting signatures. I would need over a million signatures, something no presidential candidate in history had ever achieved. And then I'd need a team of attorneys and millions of dollars to handle all the legal challenges from the DNC. So the first thing I want to tell you is that we proved them wrong. We inspired a massive independent political movement. More than 100,000 volunteers sprang into action, hopeful that they could reverse our nation's decline. No presidential campaign in American political history has ever done that. Now, although he said goodbye to the Dems in October of last year, by April of this year, RFK Jr. had 12.5% of voter support. That is the highest of any independent political candidate in over 30 years. Holy moly. So why in the world would he drop out and endorse his political enemy? What you're about to see in the next chapter is a political drama that plays out more teens high than an episode or even an entire season of House of Cards. There is but one rule. Hunt or be hunted. So we've all heard the story of national revolutions, a military coup followed by the occupation of state-owned media. And in this very modern world, owning a TV network is very important because armed with this unique tool, you can weaponize it and completely destroy someone, especially your political opponent. Uh, President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court. It shows that he started censoring not just me, for 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat to democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give the access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents. For political reasons, he's weaponizing the federal agencies. Those are really critical threats Donald to democracy. Donald Trump, of course, tried to overturn a free and fair election. He tried to overturn one, right? He's, he's still fighting in court. Yes. He's like, how is that not a threat to democracy? Him overthrow, trying to overthrow the election clearly is a threat to democracy, but the, the question was, who is a worse threat to democracy? But I can argue that President Biden is is because the First Amendment, Aaron, is the most important. Adams and Hamilton and Madison said, we put the guarantee of freedom of expression in the First Amendment because all of our other constitutional so, rights depend on it. If you have a government that can silence its opponent, it has license for any atrocity. And the only thing worse than media censorship is media manipulation, because with that, you can distort someone's words and completely destroy their credibility. Even in Hitler's Germany, you could cross the Alps to Switzerland. You could hide in an attic like Anne Frank did to imply Jews in Nazi Germany had more freedoms than unvaccinated Americans during the COVID-19 pandemic. I have never been an anti I have never told the public avoid vaccination. And my views are constantly misrepresented so that the truth of what I believe is not, we're not allowed to have a conversation with, about that with the American people, which I believe should be tested with the same rigor as other medicines and medications. And some fake news is so persuasive, so convincing, that even foreign media like Taiwan will latch onto it and promote it as true. Hey, you guys remember that rumor about RFK possibly endorsing the Harris campaign? Definitely not in talks with Harris. Uh, definitely never have brought up this idea of an endorsement with Harris. Definitely have never brought up a cabinet position with Harris. So those, those are the MSN just taking something and spinning it in a way that makes, you know, their chosen political group look good. Fake news. We have offered to talk to everybody about what your policies are. We've open sourced our platform very proudly. But the purpose of state media is not just to attack or smear the political opponents. They also serve the purpose of protecting someone without the audience even knowing. They would be astonished to learn of a Democratic Party presidential nominee who, Debating. like Vice President Harris, has not appeared in a single interview or an unscripted 
encounter with voters for 35 days. We've been days. listening to independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. <laughs> from Phoenix uh, outlining what uh, led him uh, to his quixotic quest for the White House. Some fuckery's going on. Now, the media controls what is right in front of you. But let me tell you, what happens in the shadows is even much, much worse. Clear Choice, this PAC, this DNC-aligned PAC that was created specifically to take us out, has spent millions of dollars to take us out. They have unfortunately turned us into a spoiler. <laughs> um, and... We don't want to be a spoiler. We wanted to win. We wanted a fair shot. The DNC made that impossible for us. They have banned us, shadow banned us, kept us off stages, manipulated polls, used lawfare against us, sued us in every possible state. They've even planted insiders into our campaign to um, disrupt it and to create actual legal issues for us. I mean, the extent by which um, the sabotage uh, they've unleashed upon us, it's, it's mind blowing. I mean, we're still learning new ways that they have sabotaged us. I really wanted a fair shot at this election. And I believed in the America that I, a little girl, pledged an allegiance to. That is not where we are today. And it's not because of the Republican Party taking us out. It is exclusively because of the Democratic Party taking us out. And I am so disappointed I ever helped them. It's probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life. Now, the Clear Choice Super PAC was created by Joe Biden himself with the sole purpose to destroy RFK Jr.'s political campaign. Remember when I said that he actually had the ballot on every single state in America? Well, recently, that all changed when they successfully managed to get him taken off the ballot in the very state that he lives in, New York. And I keep a residence in New York because that's where my domicile is. Officially, it has been my whole life. I've lived in New York for 60 years. Since I was 10 years old, I moved here when my father ran for Senate. Uh, I, my driver's license is in New York. My car is registered in New York. My law license is in New York. I pay income taxes more in New York more than any other state. My law office is in New York, my only law office. I vote here. It's the only place that I vote. The rule in, in virtually every state is that your domicile is the place where you intend to return. I've actually lived in 13 different addresses in this town, and this is the town where I intend to retire to. This lawsuit is a frivolous lawsuit. It's a lawsuit that was brought by the DNC. Um, the, the cost of these lawsuits by the DNC to us, to my campaign, is going to be over $10 million defending these frivolous lawsuits. We've won every one, and we're going to win this one. Um, but they're using lawfare to try to keep us off of the ballot. It's the opposite of what the, the Democratic Party was doing when I was a kid. The Democratic Party of Robert Kennedy, of John Kennedy, was a Democratic Party that was fighting to make sure that every American could vote for the candidate of their choice. The Democratic Party of today is doing everything in its power to make sure that Americans can only vote for the candidates that the party elites choose. This is the strategy of the new Democratic Party. Destroy your political opponent at all costs. Morals be damned. And when it comes to pushing a political message or a platform, forget about policy, just beat Trump. Instead of showing us her substance and character, the DNC and its media organs engineered a surge of popularity for Vice President Harris based upon, well, nothing. No policies, no interviews, no debates, only smoke and mirrors and balloons in highly produced Chicago circus. Democratic speakers mentioned Donald Trump 147 times just on the first day. Oh, who needs a policy when you have Trump to hate? Now, after all the campaign attacks via fake news and targeted manipulation, RFK Jr.'s voter support went from 12.5% back in April to just last month down to 5%. They destroyed this guy's political campaign in less than half a year. That is gangster. Behold the power of state-owned media. But do not underestimate that 5%, yo, because that 5% could decide the fate of the next four years of America. And I'm sure by now you can see where we're going with this. So in the next chapter, we're going to explain exactly how Trump could actually win the White House and be the president in 2024. Fun fact. RFK Jr. did not drop out of the presidential race. 
Instead, he suspended his campaign. Have you ever heard of a presidential candidate endorsing his political rival while encouraging people to vote for him as well? Mainstream outlets denied me a critical platform. They didn't shut down my ideas, which have especially flourished among young voters and independent voters, thanks to the alternative media. Many months ago, I promised the American people that I would withdraw from the race if I became a spoiler. So I cannot in good conscience ask my staff and volunteers to keep working their long hours or ask my donors to keep giving when I cannot honestly tell them that I have a real path to the White House. Furthermore, our polling consistently showed that by staying on the ballot in the battleground states, I would likely hand the election over to the Democrats, with whom I disagree on the most existential issues, censorship, war, and chronic disease. Well, I want everyone to know that I am not terminating my campaign. I am simply suspending it. My name will remain on the ballot in most states. If you live in a blue state, you can vote for me without harming or helping President Trump or, or, or Vice President Harris. So RFK Jr. removed his name from the ballot in the most important swing states and encouraged the people to go vote for Trump instead. And if we look at the most accurate polls for Michigan and Pennsylvania, they show 5% going to RFK Jr. and Trump only losing to Kamala by 1% and 2% respectively. And if you take into account the historical record of polls underestimating Trump by 3%, my guess is if even if only half of RFK Jr. supporters jump ship and go to Trump, he will completely own Pennsylvania and Michigan. And when it comes to Wisconsin, he'll either win or lose by a tiny margin of 1%. Now, out of these three swing states, Pennsylvania and Michigan add up to 34 electoral votes, with Wisconsin only having 10. So whoever takes Pennsylvania and Michigan will definitely take DC. Funny enough, after RFK Jr publicly endorsed Trump, the orange man jumped up three points above Kamehameha Harris. And this is post DNC when the Democrats are supposed to be at their polling peak. But thanks to RFK Jr., the gambling market has its money on Trump. And the next crucial date is September the 10th, when Trump and Kamehameha Harris will finally face off in the ultimate battle of words known as the presidential debate. That is, if they both show up anyway. So assuming they both do show up, who do you think will win? The orange man very clearly full of food or the fake ass black woman full of joy and probably even alcohol. I call myself a joyful warrior. Did RFK Jr.'s endorsement of Trump completely turn the ties in this election? Show some love in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, keep it civil down there, yo. And I will see you on the flip side. Peace.